Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I have for you today the seventh in a series of videos on the topic the spiritual powers of omniscience, omnipresence, and omnipotence on earth today. Things to look out for by Alice B. Claggett. The title of this, the seventh in the series, is What if an omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent spiritual group leader were a cannibal, killed wives, parents or seniors for their property or money, or frequented sex workers? I have a biblical quote for you from Proverbs 16, verses 29 to 33. It's a King James Version, so it's public domain, and it goes like this. A violent man enticeth his neighbor and leadeth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise forward things. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. The hoary head is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of righteousness. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. These topics are those that came up on the astral plane while I was fleeing from a group of people that I had thought were a spiritual group and that then later when I was fleeing from them I thought maybe it was a cult that kills, maybe it was a group of outlaws, um, maybe it was a mafia, you know, like that. And that had to do with the astral stories that I heard apparently because the group became angry with me for leaving. There are a number of pretty gnarly topics here and uh, all supposing it were possibly true that the leader of the group was channeling these these sorts of criminal uh, energies, uh, maybe maybe because he felt angry with me, maybe it wasn't he that was doing it, but it only seemed it was he. Maybe it was the group that was uh, resonating with the leader's upset. It's hard to tell. It's because there was a great clearing going on at the same time, so maybe it was just the clearing of the new sphere. I thought at the time that this group might be used to accusing the people that fled from the group, like the innocent patsies that fled from the group, uh, of doing the things that they themselves had done that were crimes against the law, and that they, they might have, like, all together as a group, tried to pin their various raps on such people and so they might have gotten away with um, defaming the reputation of other followers of the spiritual group that had left in that way. That is the tyranny of a group, you know, that they're able to do that because they all have loyalties to one leader and they'll do whatever he says in some cases. In the, in the case of a totalitarian, dictatorial, or fascist sort of setup. I recall doing some research on serial killers at the time and uh, uh, cults that kill and so forth, and that's featured in my blog, Awakening with Planet Earth, https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com, and it, it set me in mind of how to get free and how to deprogram and how to stay alive during that time just in case what I heard on the astral realm was really what was taking place. Anyway, 
here's what I heard on the astral realm. Please don't be too taken aback by it. Uh, Lord knows I was, and I hope my reader will not be. For all we know, it's just a bunch of stuff and nonsense. And it goes like this. The first section is cannibalism. If, for instance, the leader of an omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent spiritual group were to have the experience of cannibalism, say cannibalism of his mother's charred body, after he set fire to the family home at a very young age, that was the astral story I heard, then it would be likely that this samskara of cannibalism might spread to his entire group and be experienced by all the members. The next section is black widower or black widow. These are terms that mean uh, that a man murders his spouse for money, for her money, or that a woman murders her spouse for his money. Black widower and black widow. And the text goes like this. The same might be true of any samskara the spiritual group leader had prior to forming the group, such as the desire to marry wealthy women, then divorce or murder them, and make off with their homes or money. This would lead the spiritual group he formed to the practice of marriage and murder as well. The third section is murder of parents or senior citizens for their wealth. It is a minor step from murdering a wife for her property or wealth to murder of one's parents or of senior citizens for their wealth. The leader of a group with experience in either of these types of samskaras is likely to promote these practices in his group. For example, in the putative case mentioned above of the spiritual group leader who, at a very early age, in an act of rage, set fire to his family home, incinerating all his family members, including his parents, one might anticipate this kind of soul wounding expressing itself through all the members of the group, through the leader's assent and approval, whether it be tacit or explicit. The last section in this video is sex hound. Sex hound is a slang word. It means wanting to, to have intercourse with other people all the time and attempting to carry that out in real life. It might be somewhat equivalent to the, to the psychiatric states of satyriasis and nymphomania. It's odd, the roosters are having a duel right now as if they wanted to be the top rooster. And roosters are known for you know, just naturally being, being like that, being what you might call sex hounds of the, of the bird world. <laughs> they seem to be logging onto this part of the video. And it goes like this. Further, if a spiritual group leader who is omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent has a habit of frequenting sex workers and viewing pornography, then one might anticipate his group members would pick up these habits. Well, dear ones, that's all for now. May God bless you and keep you safe and be with you through all your days.